Good evening, we are live at the MKM Stadium. I'm your host, Alex Burgess, for an evening with Liam Rossini. Yeah. Now, we've written these nice things, Liam, here, that says, Our guest tonight had a, a stellar playing career, which you did, representing Fulham, Reading, Brighton, and, of course, City in the Premier League, coaching roles at Brighton and Derby under first Philip Koku and then Wayne Rooney, of course, um, before being appointed head coach here at City in November of last year. Um, and it had to happen, didn't it, really, because your nana was from Hull, so you had to come back eventually. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely true. It's so nice to be back. Um, amazing. Um, it means everything to me. It means everything to me to see everyone, so many people here to come out and see me. So I hope I can be entertaining, as entertaining as possible for you guys. Um, now I've stopped playing, I can have a glass of wine as well, which is nice. Um, let me just have a sip of that. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I want to do more of these events. I think you guys are the most important part of the football club. And it's really, really important that we interact and we feel like we're together. Um, and the game on Friday, obviously we won, which was great, but what made me so happy was seeing the atmosphere in the stadium. I thought the club put on a great show before the game, and there's a real sense of togetherness again. And, and that's what I really, really need. I need your help for us to get to where we want to be, which is the Premier League. Uh, I'm sure we all wanted to thank you, and you've, you've kind of done it yourself, actually, but thank you for taking the time to come and, and talk to us, Liam. But also, actually, to thank you for um, for Friday night, because, as you will well be aware, a win on Sky is a rare thing. Um, <laughs> and it, it was lovely. It was a it was a lovely 2-0, relatively, relatively, it wasn't for you, comfortable win. But never two, comfortable. No, it's never comfortable. But 2-0, we, we were very, very happy with. Um, did you manage to enjoy it? You never enjoy it at the time. You You enjoy it when the ref blows the whistle. That's when you enjoy it. And then you think about the next game, what the team should be, who played well, who needed to play better. Um, and it's just 24 seven. Sometimes I'm laying in bed at three o'clock in the morning, thinking, should I pick Oscar or Benji? I'm, I'm thinking about Ozan at three o'clock in the morning in my bed, which sounds a bit weird, um, <laughs> but that's the job and I, and I love it. And it's something I always wanted to do. And what's amazing for me is I always wanted to do it here. Uh, I never thought I'd be so fortunate that it would be my first job. And hopefully I'm here for a long time and hopefully, hopefully I'll make you guys proud as well. We're only just in March and it was end of November that you, that you were appointed, but how has it been for you these first few months? It's been amazing. Um, obviously coming back to a club that I know, there's loads of members of staff. Doors has been unbelievable in helping me, like Johnny Air, the kit man. So many good people here that I managed to work with when I was a player. Obviously knowing you guys as well has helped me. But what I do have to say is the players have been outstanding uh, since I come in. They're, they're hanging off of every word that I'm saying. They're trying to improve every day. They're working really, really hard in training. And it's difficult for them because the way that we play is very, very different. And uh, they've got to take a lot of information on board and they're trying to do that. And I think you're seeing the improvements in the team from where we were at the start of the season and hopefully the, the, the job is to improve us to a point where we can really challenge, if not this season, next season. And I know there's a few of you that get really nervous when we're playing out from the back as well. No, um, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm not as nervous as you. You just have to stick with it for now. Um, but every team that does well in the championship has a clear way of playing. Um, I was fortunate enough to be a club at Brighton who are now, what are they, sixth or seventh in the Premier League. They were 20th in the championship when I joined them. This club was 20th in the championship when I joined here as well. That Brucey had a plan, Nigel Pearson did really, really well, but it takes time. And if we can stick together through the bad moments, there's gonna be more, I'm sorry to, to say, but there is, but there'll be plenty of good. And, and what I'm trying to do is build a team that plays a really exciting brand of football, a, a brand of football where you have the ball and express yourselves. And, and part of that is playing out from the back and having the ball. Because if you have the ball, the other team can't score and you've got more chances to score yourself. So the players have been great. They've been really, really good at it. And we'll continue to try and improve over the next few months. Do you like roller coasters? Uh, no. No. Because <laughs> I mean, I thought if you, 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 you almost get in a buzz out of the, uh, the scaring. I do of laugh. You, I, I, I have to say sorry. I laugh when, when I hear the crowd go, <laughs> 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 I know it's fine. I know we've conceded a couple of goals, but I hear the crowd sometimes go, Ooh. it just makes me laugh because I know we're going to be all right. So just please stick with it and believe with it. And what I would say as well, you guys are so important in the stand. Um, say if we do play out and we get to our midfield play, plays forward, give it a clap 
because what it does, it gives the players confidence to do it again and do it even better. And it's hard. When I was a player here, I cannot describe to you how much a difference you made to my performances, especially at home. When you've got a f group of people who are really pushing for you and believe in you, it makes a difference. Maybe 2%, maybe 3%, but that could be the difference between winning the game, drawing a game or losing the game. So what we need, especially at home, is to be calm when we're playing out from the back, is to applaud it when, when it comes off. And it honestly, it'll make a massive difference for me and for the players as well. So that's just a, something that I ask for, from you guys. Looking back to one of the quotes that in my copious amounts of research that I did, Liam, that you completely just you know <laughs> ruined for me now. But you 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 said when you retired, your retirement statement uh, statement at Brighton, you you referenced uh, feeling like a enthusiastic, like a young kid again, wanting yeah. to get into coaching, which I thought was really interesting. Most ex players are are. Um, you were disappointed at retiring, as all the ex-players were. You made, you made a mention of that as well. But you, were, you seemed genuinely excited about the next step of your career and you knew exactly what your next step of your career was going to be. Yeah, I knew from the age of 16 I wanted to manage. So I always worked in a way through my playing career. I even coached here. I coached Greavesy and Brandon Fleming when they were in the under-13s here, which is crazy. So now they're a part of my first team squad and they're more of a pain to me now than they were then. Um, <laughs> So I've always built up experience in terms of my coaching, always wanted to learn, always wanted to be better. Um, so I saw my retirement as something that was just part of my journey into coaching and, ho and hopefully one day management. But it wasn't an absolute given that you were going to be a footballer in, in their minds, maybe, or was it just in yours? You also said your brother was more gifted or naturally gifted, I think, was what you said, than you were as a yeah, footballer. Yeah, he reminds me about that every day. He says he was a much better player than me, but he just liked his uh, food and his drink too much. That's what he says. So, um, no, I... I I only had one dream and that was to be a professional footballer and uh, it's so difficult. I know there's loads of young lads and young girls in the room who love the game. All I would say to you is just keep working and keep enjoying what you do and you have to make sacrifices to get to where you want to be. Um, I was really fortunate to become a footballer and I was in, so fortunate to come here to this football club and reach an FA Cup final and get promoted and play in Europe. It all comes down to hard work um, and that's what I take into my, my coaching now management. I, I'd hate to think there's another manager or coach in the championship who works as hard as me or studies when they're at home. And my wife Erica's not happy when I get home, I get the laptop out and watch another game of ours or the opposition. But that's what you have to do. I'm willing to work really, really hard to make this club successful and I know all the players are as well. Yeah. Um Let's just take a little trip down memory lane, if we can, about, you mentioned there, your time here as, as a player. They were genuinely historic times. But for, they were, amazing. weren't they? Yeah, just it incredible. incredible. It must have been an amazing experience for you as a player. It was amazing for us as fans and indeed for the football club to have to have achieved what we did, Europe and FA Cup final, things we'd never done in yeah. 100 and plus years history. Um, and you were, you were a big part of that. Yeah, it was an incredible experience. Um, I remember I came here as a trialist. Nigel Pearson brought me here as a trialist. I played at North Ferriby against Scunthorpe's reserves on a Wednesday. And then he put me straight in the team against Scunthorpe's first team here to make my debut. And at that time, we were fighting relegation in the championship. And then three, four years later, we're in the Premier League. We're playing in FA Cup finals. Uh, Matt, I was so lucky to captain the club in Europe. Uh, amazing. And that's what can happen in a short space of time. And that's what I really, really want to happen again. So yeah, it was an incredible time. I met so many good people. I just saw that David Myler's become an under 15 coach at the club, which is fantastic because he's a great guy. People like him, Tom Huddleston, Jake Livermore, Curtis, the great friends that I still speak to now. So I made a lot of friends and hopefully now in my job as a manager, I make more friends in, in this role. And it reminded me that so many um players who've come here end up staying here and I, I could name you know any number of them Steve Moran Justin Whittle Stan McHugh I mean loads and loads of players who've got no affiliation with Hull the city other than playing football but come and and, and stay uh, what is it about our, our little city that people love so much it's the people it's the people um, I, I used to come as a little boy I was eight years old seven years old come and visit my nan in the, um, in the summer holidays and I loved it because everyone was so friendly when you live, when you come from London, I'm telling you, no one speaks to you, no one says hello. You're lucky, you're lucky to get a smile from someone if you're jumping on the tube. Everyone that I came into contact, and that's why I've got such a close contact with this club, um, because I understand the area. My nan was so proud of this football club, which was just a year ago. I get emotional speaking about it, but it was literally a year to the day that I took the job. We were at Cottingham C Cemetery for a funeral and she got cremated in the amber and black. So my connection with the club, it gives me goosebumps that I'm here sat in front of you as the manager. But it's the people. 
It's a beautiful place to live. I brought my kids up here. My youngest, AJ, was born in, in, the, in the whole Royal. Um, and AJ's really proud about that. And all my, my kids now are so happy to come back. So it's a beautiful city and it's a, some beautiful parts of the city. But the most, the best thing about it is the people. And the, it's the people that make a place. But thank you. No, I don't. <laughs> In terms of ambition, just on a personal level with yourself, you want to get City into the Premier League and manage City in the Premier League. That's a given. We're all delighted by that. And, and um, if you can do that, that would be fantastic. And we'll, we'll all be right behind you as well. You're an ambitious person as well, aren't you? You know, I don't see that being the end for you necessarily. I hope not. Um, you just never know. I just At the moment, all I'm focused on is doing my best for this club and, and getting this club to where it deserves to be um, and ha creating those memories that I had here before. Um, but you never know. You always want to be the best you can be in anything that you do. So I'd love to manage this country. I'd love to manage England one day. It's, I don't know if it's going to happen. Probably not. But let's let's have, let's give it a go and see where it takes us. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just delighted to be here. Mm. Do you fancy a bit of a game, a bit of a quiz, Liam? I'm not sure. <laughs> Of course, come on, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Um, uh, we're going to do uh, nine questions. Um, I've called it Liam Rossini on Liam Rossini, um, okay. just to see how well you know yourself, <laughs> which could Don't end well this. or not. <laughs> now, I thought, we had a quick chat before on Liam, and I, I thought when I did this, I thought, all the, these are just stats and quotes and things from, from over your career, and I thought, I bet Liam will know all of these things. And you said to me, no chance. I don't know anything about myself. So, um, nine questions, uh, and uh, we've got to be a little bit competitive about it. So, uh, naught out of three, right, you're mid table. Okay. Uh, four to seven, you're in the playoffs. Sounds better. And eight or nine, you, it's automatic promotion. So, oh. there's, there's a bit of pressure. No pressure. On. No okay. pressure. All right, let's do it. We'll let's start off it. with a simple one. Early in your career, you went on loan to Torquay and helped them win promotion. But can you remember who was the Torquay manager at the time? Yeah, that's an easy one. We're going to get promoted. That's My dad was the manager. We're, get, we're going to win this league. We're going up. We're going up. Love that. Great start. Okay. Yo, that was, they, get, they get worse. <laughs> Um, 2004-2005 season, Liam, a particular event occurred to you in your first game of, these, of the season and in your last game of the season. What was it? Uh-oh, we could get relegation. 2004-2005. 2004-2005, a particular event occurred to you in your first game of the season and the same event also occurred to you in the last game of the season. Oh, what was yeah, it? I got sent off. Sent you off. Did? Yeah, I got sent off twice in the season, yeah. I pushed over Robbie Savage. That's... That's fair enough, huh? He deserved it. He deserved it. Right then. Back in 2006, Liam, you were interviewed by a very talented journalist called Matt Barlow, who actually started his career here in Hull, um, at the Hull Daily Mail. He's one of the best city reporters they've ever had, actually. Uh, he now works at the National Daily Mail. He was asking you about your social life uh, as a then 22-year-old. Um, did you like going out clubbing, taking advantage of the vibrant London scene there was at the time? When you replied, you named two things that you preferred to do rather than have a night on the town. Yeah, I remember this. What were Just those two things? Like, please don't judge me, but I was 22 years old. My favourite thing was to do was have a, a cup of hot chocolate and play Scrabble. Was that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's still my favorite thing to do now. <laughs> yes. My favorite game. This is brilliant, man. Love it. You scored just the one goal for City. Um, it was a good one, though, with your head. <laughs> it was. It was a good one. You reacted first to uh, score the rebound after a penalty taken by which player for us and saved by which goalkeeper? I know it was Jelovic because he always missed penalties in training. And I couldn't believe that he was taking a penalty. So what I did, I always knew Yellow was an unbelievable striker. His finishing was incredible. He always used to miss penalties in training. So I matched his run up because I just knew where he was going to put it. And then it was Ben Foster. Yeah, Ben was, Foster yeah. saved it and it hit me on the head and went in and I celebrated. <laughs> like it was the best goal ever. Uh, but yeah, Yellow was unbelievable. We had such a good team. You know, think about what Brucey did with Shane Long, Yellowvich, Tom, M Michael Dawson. Um, yeah, unbelievable. Andy Robertson, Harry Maguire, we've had some some incredible players here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're doing yourself a bit of a service. I, thought nah, I, thought I never got in the team. He always used to leave me out of the team. He was right. <laughs> it was Elmo and Andy Robertson and it was me. I think Brucey was right. Wow. <laughs> 
Uh, how many games did you play for City? 144. Total games, not just league. 161. Jeez. Yeah? Yeah. That was a well complete done. guess, I swear. <laughs> I, prom I promise I didn't tee these up either. Um, what was your favourite, Leah? Um, it was my favourite and my worst at the same time, FA Cup final. Mm. FA Cup final was the best experience. I, got, I came off because I, I had um, I conjunctivitis on the morning of the game. I didn't tell anyone. I was like walking around and was hide, hiding my eye because uh, I didn't want Brucey to drop me for the final. But I ran out of steam. I got cramp, I remember, in the, semi uh, in the extra time. I'll never, ever forget it. I'm walking off and I look round I just saw like 50,000 in amber and black clap me off the pitch. It's something I will never, ever forget. It's the best, one of the best moments of my life. Um, and it was such a shame that we went 2-0 up and didn't win that cup. But looking back, it was just unbelievable, unbelievable experience. Last question. Oh, now then. I meant to tee this one up with you actually, but I forgot. So hopefully this is okay. When you were at Torquay, you were staying with your dad, I believe. Is yep. that right? Yeah. Um, you'd played a few games, and then what did he do? Drop me. Yeah. According to reports that I read, you weren't very happy about that. I didn't speak to him for about two weeks. <laughs> that was mad. It was mad because I live with him, and he said to me when I joined the club, and it's something I try and take now as a manager with all the players. I try and treat them all with the same respect. He said, right, son. He said, you are my son, but when we go into the training ground, I'm the manager, and you're my player. Nothing, I won't treat you any different. I said, yeah, yeah, dad, all right, whatever, whatever. So and I, I wasn't driving at the time, I was only 17, so he used to drive me into training and drop me off at the dressing room. So we're driving in, talking about life, whatever, family, whatever we're talking, EastEnders, what we used to watch together or whatever. Go to the training ground, and then the assistant manager comes in the office and says, oh, the gaffer wants to see you. I'm thinking, I just saw him two minutes ago in the car on the way here, why does he want to see me now? So he brings me in the office, all professional, and he says, oh, um, Liam, he didn't call me son, Liam, I'm, I'm gonna drop you for the, for the game tomorrow, you've not been at the level, blah, blah, blah. I was like, you could have told me that in the car on the way here, surely, like, but it was something that stayed with me, and it was a lesson that I learned from him, is to tr always, I do it now, so when I, I always name the team the day before a game. I never name the team on the day. If a player's played a game, and he comes out of the team, I'll always tell him to their face in my office. I will always, I'll never drop a player and not, not tell them. And even though some, even already, I've, I remember a few have already wanted to, to hit me when I've told them, they have respect for you because you're telling them to your, to your face. So you gain respect from people if you give respect back, and I always try and treat the players that way as well. How, uh, we'll come to the question in a second, but you, you make an interesting point there. How, how competitive are players in, in that respect of, of being dropped? How it's the, yeah, you, it's the worst feeling. It's the hardest job in the world as a manager that Friday morning where you know maybe you're going to drop four players out of the team the hardest thing is picking a bench sometimes so we travel with 20 players and two players miss out from the bench and they've worked just as hard as everyone else the hardest part of the job is always telling those players who deserve to play that they're not playing but it's part of the job but it's their job they, they've got if you think about a player so I used to love playing here my wife Erica would come my kids would come my nan would come my mum would come they'd all be here for me and I knew that if I wasn't playing they wouldn't get that experience. It's the same for every player in the squad now. So it affects their lives. They've built up every all day, every day to play and then all of a sudden they've got someone who hasn't picked them. That's the most difficult thing for every player. Interesting. Um, the question was, you, you answered it, but you answered it incorrectly, so I'm going to give you another chance. Okay. But the question was, um, the fact that you were living together obviously did make it a little bit awkward going back to the, the Torquay situation. Um, and... You were quoted as saying you actually didn't speak to your dad for a period of time, but how long was that period? I mean, you literally said you weren't talking to him. Uh, bearing in mind you're living with him. Unofficially, with him. I, I probably said something different, but I probably didn't talk to him for two weeks. Probably something like that. But my brother, it was so funny, he came down to Torquay after, and my dad told him, don't speak to him, he's in a bad mood. First thing my brother said to me, you're so bad, your dad don't even pick you. <laughs> <laughs> But we're going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we'll take some questions from the audience. I'll come into the audience and ask some questions um, of Liam Rossini, who's been great for this first Don't be uh, shy. Half an hour, Don't, be shy. Don't be shy at all. It's Liam Rossini, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Welcome back, Liam. Do have a seat. There is a microphone prepared for you. Your glass of red is still there. It won't be there for long. It'll be gone soon. 
Being very good with that, aren't you? Now then, right, let's get some questions, shall we? Uh, what's your name? What's your question for Liam? Emily. <laughs> Hi, Emily. My question is, um, does it get stressful telling the players during the match what to do? That but is the best question of the, of the night so far, Emily. I love that. Yes, it gets very stressful, especially when they don't listen to me, which is about... <laughs> 100% of the time as well. Do you know what they do, Emily? When I'm really close to them on a touchline, normally it's either Cyrus, who's the right back, or Greavesy or Callum Eldo, who's the left back. When I'm really shouting at them, they pretend they can't hear me. And that makes me even angry and shout even more. So that's, that's the most stressful thing. That's a great question. I tell you what, Emily, I guarantee you it's even more stressful for the players. <laughs> yeah, that's you. for sure. Like it. What's your name and what's your question? Hello, Liam. I'm Harrison. Um, I just wanted to say, on Friday, do you think it was an own goal or do you think it was Macca's goal? Own goal. <laughs> I asked him this morning in training and he's still saying he got a touch, which he did, but the defender edited it in. But I'd love Macca to get it because he deserves it. I think he's been brilliant this season and I think he's going to get better and better. Right, we had a hand up at the front here, didn't we? There we go. What's your name and what's your question for Liam? Hi Liam, it's Joel. Um, just wondering that... People will be wanting to know you're starting 11 for Kov, but... If I, I tell you, then Mark Robbins will be watching this, he will know. <laughs> I want three players, bit of a different question. Three players? For, no, f no, listen. <laughs> <laughs> for, a, for a night out, and if it's not a night out, <laughs> Scrabble and uh, a bit of our chocolate. Three, three players for a night out, who would I like to go on a night out? I saw a clip of Alfie Jones dancing the other day, it was unbelievable, he's got moves, so I'll go out with him, because I can't dance. Um, I think, who else? I, th I think uh, the younger lads, Xavi, he's cool, isn't he? Xavi Simmons, he, he's a cool lad, so I'll go out with him. And the other one, goalkeeper's always crazy, so I'll take Matty Ingram or Carl Darlow as well, they're crazy, so I'll go, I'll go out with them. For Scrabble, I think, um, do you know who's really studious? Uh, Seri, he's so like calm. I think he'd be great for a cup of cocoa and Scrabble as well. I think he'd be brilliant. <laughs> We'd have to do it in French though, so I wouldn't be so good. Right, young man, what's your name and what would you like to ask Liam? Uh, my name's Jack and who was the most annoying person that you've played against? Jack, great question. I already mentioned Robbie Savage, but I like him now. Um, the most annoying player? Um, Ronaldo, because he just used to beat me every time he got the ball, mate, to be honest. So probably him. Great question. Yep, okay. We've got another one as well. Far away. All right, Liam, uh, I'm Oscar. Uh, you had quite a special time at the club. Obviously, you had promotions to the Premier League, the FA Cup final, Captain of Europe. Um, in your time here, who would you say was the three best players you saw at the club? Great question. Um, Tom Huddleston was absolutely unbelievable when he was here. Unbelievable. He was just a different class and a great guy as well. Um, I have to say, um, Andy Robertson always showed his quality from when he, what I loved about Robbo was he worked so hard to get to where he is and I watched him yesterday playing for Liverpool and score, and they score seven against Man United unbelievable and then at the same time Harry Maguire is on the other side watching who was top as well so I'd say those three naturally were the three best players that I, I, I spent my time with here okay and yours um, yeah, yeah I'd probably agree with Robertson I think Ashby he was a special player and um, I know Bambi mentioned him, which is quite a shock, really. But Robert Corrin, I think. Yeah, Robbie Corrin. I got him well with him. He's a good player. player I can't believe you haven't mentioned me in, in those three, to be honest with you. I was waiting for my <laughs> name to if come I'm out. honest, I probably preferred El Mahamadi. Yeah, you're right there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liam, we're going to just about wrap it up because we're almost out of time. Have you enjoyed it tonight? I've loved it. Thank you. Honestly, it means everything that so many people have come out to speak to me today. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I hope you enjoyed the times that we'll, we'll have together in the future. It means a lot. Honestly, representing this club means everything to me, and I know how much it means to you, so hopefully we have some, some good times to come. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm Alex Burgess, but that is a cocoa drinking, Scrabble playing head coach who hopefully is going to take us to the Premier League. It's Liam Rossini, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.